We have some extraordinary breaking news for you from Canberra. Chris Yulman joins us now from Parliament House to reveal the news about a very high profile politician who is going to stand in the Queensland seat of, of Ford. I think we'll be joined by Chris Yulman in, in just a moment. He's there with us now. Okay, Chris Yulman, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Who is this bloke? Peter Beatty, former Queensland Premier, is about to unseat Des Hardman, who was pre-selected for that seat, and step into the race of Ford in Queensland, which will be something of a game-changer in Ford, and I'm sure extraordinary news, not just in Queensland, but around the country. Of course, the Labor Party was expecting to do very well in Queensland after the return of Kevin Rudd, and this will help them even more, Virginia. Extraordinary. So what's going to happen to Des Hardman? Uh, he will be disendorsed for that seat. I'm sure he's stepping aside willingly. Uh, Peter Beattie will step into it. Don't have a whole lot more information about the process of that now. I understand that Peter Beattie has been sniffing around seats in Queensland for some time now. There was talk that he might be in another seat, and now we've confirmed this morning that this appears to be where he's heading. But he famously said that he was out of politics, he loved Queensland too much, and that besides Canberra was too cold. Remember that? Never say never, but don't forget that they don't, they don't spend all their time in Queensland. And he retired undefeated, unlike uh, many politicians, that very few of them get to get to choose the manner of their retirement. D retired undefeated and handed over to uh, to Anna Burke after afterwards. So certainly uh, had an extraordinary political career. Certainly has an enormous charisma and uh, great pull in Queensland. Mm. And having both Kevin Rudd and Peter Beatty campaigning in Queensland in what's going to be a very tight race uh, will be an extraordinary for the coalition, well, uh, for, for the Labor Party, I should say. <laughs> hey, it's a long campaign. We've got to get that stuff straight, OK? You do. <laughs> now, let's have a look at the, the bloke who actually holds a seat on a very slim margin of 1.6%, and uh, that's Bert Van Manen, MP, uh, for, the, for the Liberal Party. Uh, not a terribly high-profile candidate, and, of course, that seat was subject to, to the big Queensland redistribution. So does it make it more likely that, um, that Peter Beattie, a Labor candidate, might be able to get it? It certainly does, and that seat, as you say, was only held by a margin of 1.6%. Uh, there was a redistribu redistribu redistribution last time around, uh, which, which helped him win it. And so a uh, difficult seat for him to hold in the current circumstances. And the Labor Party really is talking up how it will go in Queensland at this election. It's hoping really to win the election there. It has yes. to make up for seats that it will lose in other parts of the country. So Brisbane and Bonner have always been in the gun. This one hasn't been one that they've talked about a lot, but certainly within their sites. But they're also talking about up to six or seven seats in Queensland. And as I say, I, I think that the effect of Peter Beattie would probably go beyond this seat throughout the rest of Queensland as well. All right, well, I wanted to ask you further about that. You mentioned in passing, you know, the charisma of Peter Beattie. So that is still, still a factor actor in Queensland, he is still a popular figure? Uh, well, to the best of my knowledge, he is. I guess that will be tested again, Virginia, at, mm. uh, at, the, at the upcoming election. But certainly uh, he was, uh, he was a, a very well-regarded uh, Premier in Queensland. The, the Labor Party ended badly, of course, but he could always say he wasn't there when that happened. And, uh, and certainly my phone's ringing right now from someone from Queensland. That I'll be back <laughs> don't, don't take the call right now, Chris. Just have a, a little bit more of a chat with us here. Look, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, Peter Beattie famously had a, a love-hate relationship with the Courier-Mail in uh, in. Queensland. So it, will that just open up a second front on the on the Labor News Limited wars, do you think, if Peter Beattie pops his head above the parapet? It's hard to see how that war could get any worse, really, is it? <laughs> yes, and, that's true. And in, in Sydney with the Daily Telegraph and in Queensland with the Courier-Mail, that's something that does concern the Labor Party mm. a great deal. But one of the other things that Peter Beattie was, was great at was campaigning against his own party and apologising for things and then getting on with it, which appears to be the way the Labor Party is moving at the moment with its campaign, a new way. You would think it's a pretty hard deal to sell that a government that's been in power for six years could offer a new way, but that is what Kevin Rudd is offering. And that's the kind of politics that Peter Beattie was great at, so I'm sure it will go down a treat. And Peter Beattie and Kevin Rudd, how do they get along? Well, obviously pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything's obvious. I'm sure that the Prime Minister would have had a hand in this. <laughs> uh, the, uh, so, uh, and, and as I that's, say... That's, that's the old two bulls in a paddock, isn't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> it might be a pretty crowded front if they all end up in Canberra at the same time. And uh, uh, But if Kevin Rudd was returned as Prime Minister, I think it would be pretty hard to unseat him next time around, particularly since it's going to take 75% of the caucus to do so. So yes. Peter Beattie might just have to spend some time with Bob Carr. Uh, but but it, it undoubtedly would be in Cabinet, I assume. Oh, my goodness. Now, when you put it that way, if, if uh, the government does not win re-election, then there's, there's some very high-profile leadership candidates there. There certainly are, of course, Bob Carr's in the Senate, and it's unusual for a senator sure. to end up being a candidate. But then again, 
John Gordon did it and moved to the lower house, but I think that uh, perhaps that's probably uh, a little bit too much of a bridge too far. Just very quickly, before I let you go, Chris Yulman, early days, of course, and no polls to look at yet, but um, how are you seeing the two campaigns play out? Well, this first week, I guess, has been a bit of an odd one in some ways. The, the parties don't really have an enormous amount of money to spend. We've been used to very big ticket items in the past. They're, they're little ticket items by the, in the scheme of things uh, so far. It's, it's really interesting as you ring around the country, you get very mixed messages from people. The, the Labor Party has been completely re-energised by the return of Kevin Rudd. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Essentially, what he's done is shunt the front line forward all around the country. Now, it might not be far enough in some places. You look at places like Victoria, where the Labor Party had its best results since the Second World War at the last election, the 2010 election, you'd think they're going to have to lose some skin there. The coalition is still quite optimistic there. I note that Tony Abbott is in Tony Abbott is in Tasmania today. He'll be looking at the seats of Bass and Braddon in South Australia. Not much expected to change. New South Wales will be a real problem still for the Labor Party. But Queensland is where they hope to make up any losses that they might uh, they might uh, that might be affected mm. elsewhere. So essentially the Labor Party will try and hold the line everywhere else and win seats in Queensland in order to win this election. That's the way that they will go. And the coalition will be trying to win enough seats elsewhere so that whatever they make up in Queensland won't won't nearly be enough. And don't don't forget that the, the coalition still believes that outside Brisbane and Bonner, that most of its Queensland seats, it still feels reasonably comfortable about, although it will feel less, less comfortable about forward from today. 